Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. As always, I hope you are having a great day. Have you ever wondered how the heat from your oven is transferred to your baked goods? Through understanding the various methods of heat transfer, we will in turn know more about how products are baked. And this can help us to produce better results, both in terms of quality and consistency. There are three main ways in which the heat generated in the oven is transferred to the food. These are convection, conduction and radiation. I will cover each of these in turn. First we have convection. Convection is heat transfer through liquids and gases. Warmer liquids and gases are less dense and therefore rise, whereas colder ones are more dense and so sink. This results in a continual movement, circulating currents and distributing heat. These currents work unassisted, however, they can be sped up through stirring. The movement of air in an oven can be increased if it is forced to circulate, hence why we have fan-assisted ovens. These are generally considered best for baking as they help to evenly distribute the heat, which often means that we can bake our goods at slightly lower temperatures for shorter periods of time. Convection currents don't always work in our favour. If we open the oven door while, say, we are baking a cake, the warm air from the oven will escape and the cool air from the room enter, which could cause the cake to sink. This is why it is very important to avoid opening the oven door whilst baking to maintain the set temperature. Next up we have conduction. This is where heat passes from a hot area of an object to a cooler area. One molecule absorbs heat and vibrates, passing this energy on to the next molecule and so on until the entire object is hot. This is what we refer to as direct heat transfer, as direct contact is needed. Conduction is an important means of heat transfer in baking. As a baking pan or sheet gets hot, this heat is transferred into the product, i.e. cake, biscuit, pastry, etc. and continues until the product is the same temperature throughout even after removing from the oven. This is why we have carryover cooking, where things continue to cook or bake even when they're removed from the heat source. And so we may want to remove our product from the oven slightly before it's baked to account for this. Conduction also serves as a way in which products are cooled. If we transfer something to a cool surface, heat is conducted away from the product, cooling it quickly. Certain materials are better than others at conducting heat, and these are said to have high thermal or heat conductivity. Materials that are very poor at conducting heat are referred to as insulators. Generally, solids are better than liquids and gases as the molecules are more tightly packed together and metals are particularly effective due to their molecular structure. And finally, we have radiation. This is a method of indirect heat transfer. Heat is transferred through space from the surface of a warmer object to a cooler one. And as we know, when something absorbs heat, it begins to vibrate, heating up the entire object. Radiation emits and absorbs thermal energy in the form of electromagnetic waves and does not require a medium, i.e. solids, liquids and gases. All objects radiate heat depending on their temperature. Hotter objects radiate more heat at shorter wavelengths and cooler ones radiate less heat at longer wavelengths. Radiation can be absorbed, reflected or transmitted depending on the properties of the material. If you have ever held your hands slightly above a hot pan and felt the heat, that is due to radiation. 
Dark surfaces generally radiate more heat than lighter ones because they absorb more heat energy. Dull surfaces are also very effective for the same reason. And so it follows that dull black baking sheets bake food faster than bright shiny ones. You are probably now getting an idea of how understanding the methods of heat transfer can help in many ways when it comes to cooking and baking. From choosing the right bakeware, to knowing the length of the baking time, setting the temperature of the oven correctly, etc. Next time you cook or bake something, begin to notice the different ways in which heat is transferred and how this affects your product. We have now reached the end of the video. I hope that the information I have provided here is helpful for you. And of course, if you have any questions, please do pop them in the comments below. I will happily answer them if I can. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.